Four. Fender Play Live, filling in for Scott this week. I am Pete Griffin, and this week we have such an awesome show for you guys. I've got Jimmy James here from the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio, and we're going to talk about Curtis Mayfield, everything about it. This guy's an expert on it, so we're going to learn a ton about this very influential soul musician. And at the end of the episode, we're going to have a performance from the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio. I'm so excited to see that. Make sure you stick around. Please welcome my guest, Jimmy James, on guitar. All right. Yeah. So start with the silly questions. How long have you been playing guitar? Man, I've been playing since I was like 12, you know, okay. just messing around with it, you know, but really got serious at 12, you know, uh -huh. pretty much. So, yeah. What, what drew you to guitar? Like, what was... Um, you know, when I first heard My Girl, uh, okay. The Temptations, mm -hmm. and Robert White, who was the guitarist on that, mm -hmm. um, was from the Funk Brothers, the Motown House Band. Yeah, yeah. He was the one who got me into that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just all those interlocking parts oh, and stuff. Definitely. Not necessarily definitely. showing off or anything. Oh, no. Just writing oh, for the All song. in the groove, man. Yeah. So uh, you can learn My Girl on Fender Play, of course. Uh, very fun, easy tune to learn, and, and everybody knows it. Uh, you're playing a performer strat today. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what, what brought you to the strat? What, what, what do you like about man, the strat? Man, you know, I always like the sound of it because of the, the you know, the single coil pickups and how it's pretty bright and it cuts through. Let's check it out. So, like. Nice, man. Killer. Uh, I am playing my one of my prized possessions. This is my 77 all original jazz bass that I got off eBay a bunch of years back and expected to just let it sit in a closet and go up in value. Uh, and then I started playing it and realized it's my favorite bass that I own. I just don't take it out all that often because uh, <laughs> it's irreplaceable. But today, we're not talking about gear, we're talking about Curtis Mayfield, one of the most influential soul artists you've ever come across. We have three of his tunes available on Fender Play and we're gonna go over those. But uh, to start with, we're gonna play what we started off with, with how we, let's do some more Pusher Man then. Okay. Cool. One, two, three, four. <laughs> those parts like fit together oh. where it's like we play something separate and then we both hit beat two together and right. it's just such genius writing uh, yeah it's such a killer tune uh, what drew you to Curtis Mayfield to begin with how did Man, you find him it has a lot to do it I mean it's his songwriting um, how straightforward it's very blunt and you know what he has to say mm -hmm. but it's also his guitar that is his guitar playing is very like it's very it's very delicate, very delicate, yeah. like a delicate tapestry of, you mm -hmm. know, things going on, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, and it's just like when you hear stuff like, like I said, we uh, played a little bit of People Get Ready that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, he not, plays not a, lot a lot of, of full chords, like two right. note chords. Yeah, like that. triads and stuff yeah. like that. He's, um, he's playing like a lot of like pull-offs and hammer-ons. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why you hear that, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
delicate's you know? a great word for that. Right. Like it's, it's not so heavy. Very smooth. And, yeah, it's very Yeah. Different. So most people are probably familiar with, with Curtis's solo records, like Superfly and his first mm -hmm. one, Curtis. But what did he do before that? Where, where did he come from? Um, the stuff that he... the. The stuff that he did with the impressions, oh, okay. you know, coming out of Chicago, mm -hmm. you know, because he started with them. Um, he became their guy after Jerry Butler left, who was also from Chicago as well, and mm -hmm. he started writing for them. And, you know, he did songs like, I mean, his first song, like, Gypsy Woman was a big hit, big hit yeah, yeah. you know, and he did songs like People Get Ready, mm -hmm. and, I mean, the catalog is countless. Mm -hmm. It's hard to even just keep up with it, yeah, but it's yeah. it's all fantastic. Yeah, seriously. And a big part of what, what people uh, associate with Curtis Mayfield is the way he infused social issues into his music and really was kind of speaking about what was happening at the time. Right. And what's so cool about that is it was, he was really a voice of the civil rights music, of the civil rights movement right. with his music. And what's incredible to me is how a lot of that stuff, uh, unfortunately, is still relevant today. Oh, yeah. You know, like a lot of those songs still are talking about how people are, are in a situation that they feel like they can't get out of. Right. But a lot of his tunes also had sort of a hopeful message about right. moving on up and like and right. just bettering yourself and figuring out how to get out of the, the... Well, when you hear move on up, it's like he got that... The, the line from that actually comes from a tune called We're a Winner that he did in, I think it was 1967. Okay. That he did with the Impressions, you know, mm -hmm. and he kind of says it in the chorus. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, to hear the the verses, you know, like, you know, he tells everybody to be a winner, you mm -hmm. know, and never let anybody say that you can't make it because of feeble minds in your way. And he really was trying to uplift people when there was a time when people, you know, they were told, oh, you can't be this, you can't go further, you know, but yeah. he uplifted people's spirits. And that's what music is supposed to do. Exactly. You know? and, and we can all stand to hear that oh, yeah, a definitely. couple times a week. You know, I, I, I know I suck. So, or at least I think so. And <laughs> no, so hearing no. stuff like that really, really kind of, it's just great to hear that through music, especially oh, yeah. stuff that's, that's timeless. You know, oh, yeah. that's, that's really, oh, it uh, always will be. You know? So now, as we're talking about it, uh, you can learn how to play that song, Move On Up on Fender Play. And let's do a little bit of that right now. Okay. So one, two, or one, two. If you're just starting out or maybe play guitar but aren't as familiar with Curtis's style, what are some things you can do to like sound more like him? Like how can you emulate oh, that? It's it's his delicate touch, mm -hmm. but I'll go first and foremost, his tuning. Oh. Um, he was tuned to F sharp, the black keys on the piano. Right. And so that's how he learned how to play, was tuning to that. And that's it so has strange. a really tight sound. I you know, bet. it has a really tight sound to it. Um, but again, it's his pull-offs and you know, and stuff. And of course, he's playing on Fender equipment, too. Mm -hmm. And so it's just it's just how you approach it. It's a light but dynamic touch mm -hmm. to it, you know. And he used strats and tellies, too, right? Oh, yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. And the, the whole, I, I, I was talking about how I love it when a guitar player shows up with a telly because it means he's not going to be in my frequency range at all. <laughs> and I, I have a pretty, you know, mellow bass tone, especially on this with the, oh, with yeah. the dead string. So everybody kind of sits in their own place. And, right, and pretty you much. You don't have to mess with uh, tone knobs on the amp or anything like that. And uh, if you're curious about more open tuning things, uh, even besides the F-sharp tuning, which sounds pretty bizarre to me, right. uh, there are tons of lessons on Fender Play to check that out. It's kind of cool just to try tuning your open strings to something else and see what else comes out. You know, those same shapes that you play mm -hmm. suddenly have a completely different sound, and oh, you yeah. can write a whole sound out of that. Um, how do you describe his tone, like, besides the delicateness? Like, was oh, he... that's, you know, again, it's a very, it's a very delicate, like, it's hard to describe, but it's a very smooth but very delicate. Like it's really nice on the ears. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so, and it's really like really hits you though. You know, it's yeah. not not full out like uh uh. You know, yeah. it's like really just like you know you hear. You know, or he does songs like uh. 
-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Stuff like that where you're not really heavy handed, but it's just the dynamic of how you you know, play it, the touch of it, you yeah. know, the feel, which is always in your fingers. You yeah, know? and what's so cool about doing these songs just with us is a lot of the songs are so percussion driven on the mm -hmm. record, oh, yeah. but the way it, all these parts interlock together, mm -hmm. I'm not missing the drummer right now. Like it's mm -hmm. this, we're actually managing to, to keep the pocket going, which oh, is yeah. kind of surprising in some ways. Uh, and then another thing that he uses obviously is the wah-wah pedal, which, oh, yeah. you know, he was sort of uh, iconic for that. What's, right. What are the, some of the ways he does that? Well, like, you hear a song like, um, we were just playing, you know, Pusher Man. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you might hear him, like he was doing the... And then he does something like this. And, yeah. So know, a combination of in time, but then yeah, also out of time. Yeah, and then out of out time, of too. Yeah. yeah, he'll do like... Yeah. Know, but then he'll, You know, something like that. You That's know. so cool. It gives it almost like a like a voice quality. Like, oh yeah, uh, you, you can't really do that without having that that wah pedal. Like, yeah, he has a different way. It's like his way of playing it is it's not it's not always so straightforward. It like it kind of swims, mm -hmm. you know, through the song kind yeah, of yeah. in a way. So it kind of gives you that, you know, that old. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that. So you hear that. You know, in a lot of his songs, there's a song he did off his live album called Mighty Mighty, mm -hmm. and he does stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, and you get to hear it throughout the song. He does two, do, uh, two different shows, but mm -hmm. you hear it in both the songs, and he does it in different tempos, but he still kind of yeah. does that whole thing, you know. It's so cool to hear little documents of that, where they're playing mm -hmm. the same song, but like because it's a different night, and has a different tempo, or a different right. feel, or a different solo on it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Stuff like that. It's, it's so fun to check that out. Uh, do you use the same Curtis uh, tuning as Curtis? We have a question from Gordon Lewis on the. On um, the you know what? I have. I'll be honest. I have. I've tried it. I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't figured it out. I mean, yet. I was. I was thinking about it. it kind of broke my. I, I'm just. I'm still standard tuning, but I'm still figuring it out. But yeah. one day, one day I'll get to it. But yeah. I haven't. Haven't got to that point yet. Yeah. But I mean, it sounds like we're we're you're doing fine with with recreating oh. it without having to do that. So. Uh, cool, we got one more tune to play for you, which is the iconic song Superfly from the album and movie of the same name. Yep. Uh, let's see if I remember it. And, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I hope we both so, remember it. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So much fun, such a great yeah. song. Uh, another question from Elias Reyes, how has Curtis, Curtis influenced us? And like, it sounded like you talked about that well, a little bit. You hear him, like, you hear him in a lot of like, social protest, you know, you hear right. him in that um, realm. You also hear him, he was, you know, he also influenced um, Jimi Hendrix very heavily. Oh, okay. You know, um, you can hear in songs like, um, have you ever been to Electric Ladyland? Mm -hmm. You listen to that song, that's Curtis written all over it. Yeah. Even better to even hear it because in the mix there's drums and stuff. But if you go listen to Jim Hendrix, um, the Experience box set where he does it solo by himself, mm -hmm. you can hear Curtis's influence. Uh, you can also hear him in Bob Marley, oh, especially yeah. like, like uh, One Love. Mm -hmm. Actually borrows, a lot of people probably don't know this, but if you listen to the last verse of One Love, you hear him actually borrow the last verse of People Get Ready. Oh, wow. I did And not so know he that. actually credits Curtis Mayfield with that, but mm -hmm. that is a lot of what his music was based off of the impressions, Curtis Mayfield stuff. Yeah. And a lot of others that um, came about, you know, like Marvin Gaye, you know, when yeah. he came along and did What's Going On right. and stuff. And it was influenced by Curtis doing what he did, mm -hmm. you know, social protest and civil rights and the better of human mankind. Yeah, you know? so, and that's, yeah. and that's all, I mean, everyone likes listening to music just for fun and stuff, but like yeah. there's, uh, these days we forget how important that was during the 60s and 70s yeah. of just letting people know about 
what people were going through by putting right. it in a song. Like, you know, I, I first heard Public Enemy and it, and it blew my mind because I had no idea that that was out there. Like, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that was the human experience because I was 12 and grew up with my world and had, knew nothing about that, so. Well, the thing I will also throw in about Curtis is that with his music, it makes you think. You right. know, it really makes you use your, your mind and really like, put two and two together, right. and you're like, oh, wow, he's so right, you know, yeah. and he's right in there with it. You yeah, know? it's so, all about the, the human yeah. experience. So every week we, we give homework to our viewers and give them grades and tips to improve their playing, and this week we're giving you some Curtis homework. For the very beginners, uh, try playing a minor seven chord for us. Curtis used a lot in his progressions. Why don't you show yeah. us just a regular so old minor seven, seven chord? So. That's totally the sound of Curtis Mayfield. Yeah. That's, you know, there's Use the all move on up. Like, yeah, and other tunes too. Yeah. And then for intermediate people, play the progression for moving on up, which is just those two chords, but you saw how, how kind of busy his, his right hand was and how groovy it was. Mm -hmm. Try that at half speed first and really make sure you're, you're nailing the rhythm of it. Because a lot of the stuff, if you, if, you go to, if you go to full speed immediately, you're not gonna get some of the nuances of it. Right. And that's what, uh, what I tell a lot of my students a lot of times, is like, look, slow it down, play it with a click, figure out which is a downbeat, which is an upbeat, mm -hmm. and, and make sure you're putting the note where you want it to play. Mm -hmm. And then if you wanna blow our minds, play that, that cool like main uh, riff from Pusher Man, with, that's basically the melody. Right. So let's hear that one more time. Yep. That. that vocal melody. And then that. Yeah. Nice. And you're doing that with octaves? Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's what, you know, that's what he did on the record and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And it's really like, it, of course, because when he's going, you know, he's singing that, and so yeah. he's doing that, you know. Yeah, and it's yeah. so cool how his guitar playing matches his vocal style, too. Oh, like, yeah, like uh, it's super. called uh, call and response. Yeah, you know, yeah. all day. Yeah. Really. Well, dude, thank you so much for talking oh, about man, this. What, what's you. going on with you guys at the moment? Uh, right now, we are on our, we're on an American tour right now. Oh, okay. Um, and the best way to find us. Oh, there it is. Bam. Uh, the Delvon Lamar organ trio. Mm -hmm. uh, that's our record, Close But No Cigar. And we also have another record called Live at KXP. So, so you can find us online. You can find us anywhere out there. All right. Social webs. Cool, man. Dude, thank you so much for talking to me about oh, this man, stuff. I, I learned so much just from oh, this. And th give it up for Jimmy James one more time. Yeah. 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 Incredible. We're going to be seeing a special performance with Jimmy James' band, the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio, so make sure you stick around. Now, before we get to Dylan with the weekly giveaway, let's take a moment to recap the new Fender Play Streaks Reward and Giveaway entry. Are you ready to take your plan to the next level? Then check out Streaks, the all-new Fender Play feature that rewards you the more that you play. You can catch fire and earn some streaks by completing three different seven-minute sessions within a single week each session on a different day. That's actually really important because for me, I know when I'm learning something, if I just cram it all in one day, it doesn't really sink in. They've, they've done studies to figure out how as you're learning these things, just getting some sleep and waking up the next day, that song is a little more confirmed in your head. So you can do that and then that, we, that automatically enters you into the giveaway. And for those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, believe it or not, each week here we give away a new guitar, bass, amp, or ukulele to one lucky Fender Play subscriber. And all you gotta do is practice. You, you win twice. So for your chance to win, all you have to do is make sure you're a Fender Play subscriber and practice at least three times a week. That's all you gotta do, incredible. Strats, tellies, jazz masters, P basses, J basses, Mustang amps, just achieve your weekly streak and if your name is chosen, you get to pick the instrument of your choice I wish this existed when I was growing up. I wish this whole system existed when I was growing up. Uh, we had to learn stuff off a, off a CD or a record or a tape. Incredible. But now, without further ado, please welcome back our good friend Dylan to tell us who is the lucky winner this week. Oh, Dylan. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah, so can I get a drum roll, please? Yes. Can I get a drum roll? Thank you For so much. the winner is... Ladies and gentlemen, this week's winner is Rachel B. All right, all right, Rachel. Rachel. Congratulations, Congrats. Rachel. Yeah. For more info on the new giveaway rules, check out the link in the description, as well as the post in the community. So what's been going on in the community this week? Uh, great week this week in the community. Uh, thank you, Pete, very much. Uh, there's been a lot of new engagement, new members, old members, helping new members, teachers chiming right. in, people getting involved, and it's really cool to be there and just to get to take part in all that. So mm -hmm. um, a couple of people I want to mention, though, in particular. Uh, Don 
uh, Gear, she uh, she posted a video of herself. I'm sorry, Don Greer posted mm -hmm. a video of herself playing and singing for the first time, which wow. is pretty colossal if you think about it. Yeah. Um, and this was like a big overcome of a lot of personal, you know, things that she had gone through to try to learn how to play and then also try to play and sing. So she's mm -hmm. really, really happy about that. The community embraces that big time. That's amazing. Callum Rhodes is somebody who's been posting for a while in the community. And uh, he's a fairly new member, but he mastered the GC and D chord. And he's found like the plethora of songs that you can play with those three chords. Yeah. It's an endless journey. So. Yeah. It's amazing how one little thing like that opens up all these opportunities where you start hearing something in all this other music. It releases the crap. Across cracking. genres. That's yes, right. exactly. That's, where, that's what it does. <laughs> and then uh, we've got Ken also who uh, unlocked the family of chords. And um, you guys just played a couple tunes that, that highlighted the family of chords a minute ago. Okay. Yeah. So congratulations, Ken. Cool, so every week we are adding new song lessons, so there's always something new to learn, both for bass and guitar. What's new on Fender Play in terms of the songs? Yes, so new material every week, and this week is a, a, a really important week, because we've got a new song by the Rolling Stones. You may have heard of the Rolling Stones. Oh yeah, I think Has I have. Has anybody heard? Yes, okay, yes. It's, it's this group. <laughs> so uh, we've got... Oh, nice. So, Gimme Shelter is the mm -hmm. new tune. So that's, it's an awesome lesson too, I just watched it today. It's killing. Cool. Um, we've also got uh, <laughs> Knights of Sidonia by Muse. So wow. if you've never heard of Knights of Sidonia, I challenge you. I challenge. I Fender Play challenge you <laughs> to go and listen to Knights of Sidonia and then listen to this lesson because it's awesome. And you've got like surf guitar stuff in the song. You've got uh, gallops. I mean. Gallops are the most important guitar technique, I think, in the history of all guitars. Well, so, it drives the whole thing, yeah. It does, it drives, it drives. And that's just an epic song in general. Absolutely, I mean, the song is like every guitar technique. Yep. Uh, maybe minus a few, but most guitar techniques mm -hmm. ever made in history. So enjoy that. We have one more tune too, that uh, sort of an homage to last week's Fender Play Live, which is California by Joni Mitchell. And that's a really killer, you can get your cowboy chords in. It's some highbrow music. If you haven't heard it, you need to listen to the song and then learn it. Yeah. That's three incredibly different songs. And they're all like. live right now. Yeah. Yes. So go check it out. Well, thanks mm -hmm. for the updates, man. Sure. And we have a very special live performance for you tonight what? from Jimmy James, our guest, and the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio. I'm so psyched to see this. They sounded so great in Soundcheck. They're playing some covers of classic Curtis Mayfield songs. They'll probably throw in a few of their own stuff. I don't even know. Take it away, you guys. Woo!
We are the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio, all the way from Seattle, Washington, also uh, Jackson, Mississippi. I'm going to introduce these guys before we get started. On the drums, all the way from Jackson, Mississippi, his name is Dr. Denny Burks. Give it up for Dr. Denny Burks, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Delvon Lamar. And the man of the hour. My big headed friend. It's on video now, buddy. <laughs> Give it up for Jimmy James on the guitar, ladies and gentlemen. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed the set. We gonna get it started.
so much. That was incredible. Give it up for the Delvon Lamar Organ Trio. Oh my God. That was incredible. I'm Pete Griffin. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Defender Play Live. We're going to have them play a little bit more here, but you don't get to hear it. But for now, I need you to strum that G chord. And we'll see you guys next time. All right.